What is it about serial killers that we just can't stop talking about? Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, the Zodiac Killer, Dennis Rader. I'll be discussing this fascination with investigative journalist and author Billy Jensen. And later, I'm hitting the streets to talk to you about which cases you can't stop talking about. Also, I know I keep reminding you, but please, you guys, do not forget to join the Crime Obsession Facebook group and use that hashtag, MyCrimeObsession. We want to hear from you. Here to unpack some of the stories making headlines is a name familiar to us true crime fanatics. He's written crime stories for Rolling Stone, Los Angeles Magazine, Boston Magazine, and the New York Times. He also helped finish Michelle McNamara's posthumous hit true crime novel, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. His own book, Chase Darkness With Me, How One True Crime Writer Started Solving Murders, is released in one week. Everybody, please welcome Billy Jensen. Hi. Hi, it's How good to be here. How are you? I'm doing great. You are royalty where I come from. <sighs> where do you come from? The true crime the world. The true crime world, yeah. yes. Well, thanks for having me. And now, crime time. First story is an update in the horrifying story of Louise and David Turpin. They're the parents who were arrested last year after authorities rescued their 12, I repeat, 12 children from a chamber of abuse. 12 of the couple's 13 children who range in ages from two to 29 years old were found starved, beaten, and shackled to their beds in January of 2018. The children were rescued after their 17-year-old child crawled out of a window and managed to call 911. The parents recently pled guilty and the DA is recommending 25 years. This is devastating on so many levels. And it's like they were on another planet, right. and now they are out in this world, and I just hope to God that they're getting the counseling that they need. The neighbors said that they didn't notice anything out of the normal. The parents did a great job of keeping them super isolated. They were homeschooled, they were rarely outside. They even went to the lengths of taking pictures and posting them on social media to make it seem like a happy family. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that happens, is that you have this family with 12 kids mm. creating this outside veneer, but nobody was ever actually able to go inside and see what was really going on. Now, this story caught my attention and absolutely broke my heart. Police have recently given an update on the alleged murder of Jacqueline Smith. Now, if this one hasn't made your radar, listen up. Jacqueline was killed on December 1st, 2018, when a man reportedly stabbed her to death after she pulled over to give money to a woman who had a sign up saying, help me feed my baby. Baltimore police struggle to figure out who committed the crime. That is until now. Preliminary reports say there was absolutely no panhandler and Jacqueline was stabbed to death by her husband while her stepdaughter was in the car. They have both been arrested. The reason why this story went viral mm -hmm. was that Good Samaritan angle. The absolutely. idea that you are going to pull up, give somebody a dollar, and right. then you get stabbed. And for a father to rope in his daughter. You know, it's pretty, it's it's a horrifying tale. They probably started interviewing this guy mm -hmm. and the stories would change every time they would talk to him. Is that I mean, how you catch usually, a killer? You gotta keep them talking, yeah. yeah. You keep them talking, they're gonna slip up somewhere and it's gonna be in the detail. That's where the devils are. Now, as of taping this, police have not yet released a motive, but you know I will be tracking this case and we'll let you know an update as soon as we get any new information. Finally, this gem out of Florida. Gardenia McCullough was arrested for stealing a rental car in Jacksonville, clearly waiving her right to remain silent. Gardenia had plenty to say. Why did you take the car? I don't know. You don't know? Demons told me to do it. Who told you to do it? The demons. So you admit you took it? No, I didn't take it. The demons took it. FYI, Gardenia's in jail awaiting trial. No word if the demon is with her. I'm glad all she did was steal a car because that's, and that's all this demon told her to do. But that is a good point because no sometimes demons. the demons are so loud and they tell you to do insane things. Uh, yeah, at least it didn't escalate to something right. really, really bad. Florida demon is going to be way more basic than... In Florida man? Than the Florida man. Yeah, I think they're, they're going to go, what, what does he tell you to do? He tells you to go drink a beer and then, then walk a, an alligator into the 7-Eleven to yeah, go get more like, beer. Yeah, he's like, put on this Hawaiian kind of shirt and be a... All right, now on to our main topic. Now, Billy, you've spent a lot of time just diving deep and breaking down the minds of serial killers. How did you get started in all of this? You know, I started getting into it when I was when I became a writer. What is it about serial killers specifically that we're just so transfixed with? We're born to, and the first stories that we hear about, whether it's like a Disney movie or bedtime stories, are there's monsters in them. Mm. And monsters are so pervasive in our storytelling 
So the idea that there really are, you know, there used to be monsters out there in, in the world. We thought, you know, we didn't know what they were, but they were dinosaurs or whatever. And there were monsters. There doesn't seem like there's monsters out there anymore, except for these guys. Right. It reminds me of Sam Little, who really preyed on the marginalized members of society. Samuel Little has come out and said, and serial killers, if they've killed five people, they're going to say they killed 50. You know, yeah. they, they like that braggadocio. He said he killed 90. Samuel, Samuel Little came out and said he killed 90, yeah. and they've been able to verify a lot of them, almost By his half artwork. of them. And the thing is, is that he's reliving the case when he's doing the artwork, and he's actually, he's getting off on, 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 on these details when he's talking to the people that are coming in. So Well, BTK, who was Dennis Rader, he got caught because he was starting to communicate with the police. Yeah. What is that <laughs> ego? In, and I know you're not a psychologist yeah, and you no, can't no, speak no. on I, that. But I, like, could, I could talk to that, talk about that one. So Rader is so great, and you wish everybody would do well, this. No, because of this, this is the reason why. I mean Rader as the um as the story. Got it. So he becomes an empty nester. Right. And he gets bored. And he's like, you know what? I used to have fun. What did I have fun doing? Oh, I remember. I would kill people, but then I also like messing around with the cops a little bit. So he starts talking to the cops again, being really cryptic. But the, the best part of that story is he writes to the cops and he says, if I send you a computer disk, will you be able to figure out who I am? And the cops are like, no. We, don't be able, we won't be able to send it, send it in. So he sends them a computer disk. Inside the computer disk, they see that the information that's on the disk was from a computer that was registered to a church. They look through the church things, they find his name, and then they get him. And then he actually meets the police, and he goes like, you guys lied to me. It's like, yeah. So I must feel like the BTK killer is like a modern-day Zodiac killer, how the Zodiac used to send letters to the newspaper to kind of get attention and notoriety. Yeah, and that's exactly what Son of Sam did as well. What do you say to people who say that the fascination with serial killers takes the focus off of the victims? The problem with the, the true crime genre mm. is that you have a thousand supervillains and very few superheroes that you know the names of. Th those are the people that we need to prop up. So you need to prop up the victims and you need to prop up the investigation and the investigators. And stop talking about the murderer. And, and stop talking, I mean, you have to talk about the murderer in the sense where with Golden State Killer, let's say, where we had to talk about the different things that he was doing and hit, you had to get into the, the psychology of it. But I swear to God, when I found out that night that he was caught, a switch flipped in my brain. Mm -hmm. And I didn't care about those other crime scenes, the 13 crime scenes and the, the 50 rapes. Those were, were now details that were like wiped from my brain in a sense. And all I cared about was create a timeline. Where has he been? I know he just didn't do these, these crimes. Right. This wasn't where he stopped. He might have stopped in 86, but where did, did he ever go on vacation? Did he ever go to summer camp? Are there crimes from, from way back when that weren't um, Wait, can I ask you a solved? question about that? Were you, did you have any idea who he was at that point? No. Did you have a list of like four people you're like, maybe? Oh, and it was, oh, no, we had a list of a thousand people. Sure, but you, you but didn't he wasn't, narrow it he down. Wasn't on the, no, as soon as I find that, this is actually the last chapter of my book. So I find out I'm in Chicago, I'm in a hotel room, and we're going back and forth with everybody. And as soon as I learned the name, the first thing I did was go into Michelle's hard drive, which is on my computer, and did a search for it, didn't find it. Uh, it turns out it was actually in, Michelle had copied, and this is how, how detailed Michelle was with Paul Haynes, her researcher, is that she had copied a, um, a bunch of phone books and stuff, and Paul had actually found the name in one of the phone books. But that's like, you know, 10,000 people right. or whatever. So no, the, he was not on anybody's radar. Billy Jensen, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for all the great work you're doing. And I'm very excited to listen to your book. Well, thanks for having thank me. Thank you so much. Now, it's clear that serial killers fascinate us in a way that is very hard to explain, so I went directly to the true crime fans to find stories that continue to captivate you. Watch. I'm up to speed with the Australian serial killers, Ivan Milat. You ever heard of him? No, yeah, tell He's me. the backpacker murderer. He would steal people off the side of the road, and then um, he would take them out into a national park and dispose of them. I Why you gotta do it in a national park? It's easier to hide a body. There's plenty of open spaces in Australia. Did he get caught? He did get caught. <gasps> like the Ted Bundy tapes and stuff. What on, was like... your thoughts about that? 
My grandma actually saw him at a bar in Tallahassee the like night or a couple nights after he killed the girls in the sorority house. Was she intrigued by him? Because one of the yeah, big things right now is that he's people are saying he's so attractive. Yeah, well, she just thought he was creepy because he's like staring at everyone. She said he was just there alone, like really dressed up. And she said it was weird because like no one there dresses up and he was just like in like a suit or something. What intrigues you more, a case that's been solved or a case that's still cold? Um, a case that's been solved. Yeah. You're from Wisconsin. Are you a big fan of making a murder? I am. Yeah? Yes. What do you know about it? Tell me everything. Well, I live in Milwaukee, so we're only about an hour away from uh, Manitowoc. But... Did Avery do it? Um, I believe he did not. Um... What's the takeaway from this case? Don't live in Manitowoc. Great. <laughs> do you follow crime at all? Uh, not really, no. 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 When I say the words Amanda Knox, nothing. That's the thing, no. Uh, BTK? Neither. Uh, Ted Bundy? No. <laughs> Tracy Stump? No. Cool. All right, moving on. Finally, as promised, a chance for you to weigh in. In researching for this episode, I came across a couple of posts that I want to share with you. Valerie Sword posted, have you ever wondered how many serial killers you've encountered in your life without knowing? Girl, yes, constantly. I think about this way too much. And Susan Messick posted this request for serial killer related shows. I love watching shows about serial killers. I've watched the one about John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Green River Killer, and a long time ago, Ted Bundy. Does anyone know of a good series about any other? Man, I'm morbid, I guess, LOL. No, you are not morbid, my friend, but Renee Harrington did have a good suggestion. That's a new story to me. I just watched The Frozen Grounds about serial killer Robert Christian Hansen, OMG. I never even heard of this monster, killed around 20 girls and women. Now, this is why I love this group so much. I feel like there's always something new to learn. And guess what? I'm going to check out The Frozen Grounds tonight, and you guys should too. Let me know, we can compare notes. Thank you to Billy Jensen. Make sure to check out his new audiobook, Chase Darkness With Me. And as always, thank you to you. You're the real stars of this show. It's your posts and comments that provide a lot of material that we talk about. So make sure you join the Crime Obsession Facebook group and use that hashtag, MyCrimeObsession. Listen, I like knowing I'm not alone in my love of true crime. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.